So the, the point is, you know, as I said, w where's the rules? You set those <laughs> rules, then you never have this fun. <laughs> you know, that's what I have. I have loads of fun. And just um, things just happen, and that's why I use them or try them. Or I'm jealous. You know, I'm, I'm jealous of the DJ having all the fun. And that's why you saw me, you know, kind of going, right. So, I mean, Tom Morello's brilliant from Rage, Ma Rage Against the Machine for <laughs> nailing urban sounds on a guitar. But uh, so I needed a new approach because he did one where he was completely rubbing strings. But I thought with the plectrum, just getting that, <coughs> you know, using that kind of tone for me works. And I love that uh, bass sounds. You know, that's what really works for me. <laughs> this is the old boss octave. It's absolutely fantastic for just getting that kind of, you know. I tend to drop the dry, sig dry signal in there, give it that kind of... So if I'm going... Oh, actually, I can just loop with that guy. Anyway, let, let's not go there because I'll end up playing a five-minute tune. <laughs> but, uh, but bass sounds for me, there's some octavers. This Boss Octaver, what's really cool about it for me personally live is it has a threshold value. So if, if I play, it's not on all the notes, it's not on the higher notes, it's on the bass notes because I can set the threshold at where the bass actually follows. It's a really nice <laughs> octaver for doing stuff like that, so you can play the chords as well as the bass line, but obviously that takes a bit of practice, being able to play, you know, kind of... <laughs> you know, having moving bass lines and have the chords going along. But then there's uh, octavers like the Drop from Digitech. Um, very smooth octaver, not as... I mean, to me, that is more... You know, it's got a sound, a synth-like almost sound, whereas that is quite... It's a guitar sound, it's pitch shifted. But it's great for playing chords on with bass notes, one octave down. I use two octaves down when I'm playing as well. Um, I use modulations that are not constant. Because I'm mean, thinking about modulation, you know, the, it rises and falls and you have to move it according to its speed. But I like it to just kind of slow and start and then drop away and then come back and have artifacts in it. And then some effects units, hardware devices, actually give you, you know, the, the usual tricks, the warp vinyl and things like that, and um, little crackling noises. But this, I mean, you can play chords. clean isn't it every note that there's an octave to it which is a great sound for it's a nice really nice octave it's weird because I started with the whammy and now I've got the uh, ricochet and the drop and there's even a 12 string pedal they do so we've got it all separate because none of them do the one job which is maybe that's from them making money that's what companies like to do they like to split up all the functions and sell them separately and you know you buy the app and in-app purchases and I won't give you everything will they yeah that's that's the nature of it how are we doing for time Mike uh, okay uh fix for a couple more here so there's my tech, my roadie, at the time, uh, setting up my gear, hating me all the time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> set up, setting this, all that rack up, all my amps up. And m these are MIDI guitars, they're golden guitars. That's actually chrome 
Um, it has all manner of customization on it. That's at Shepherd's Bush Empire, I think. Um, and on this particular tour, it was the beginning of the world tour, and um, my, uh, as we were about to leave for America, my visa was refused. So that was the end of my gig, my tour with this band. Left at the airport, waving bye-bye, because I is Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally because the letters in my name, and they had this coup on the US consulate on oh, Muslim names, and then they have to go through this process, and it ends up on a computer, and then they go, yeah, you're all right, mate, you can go now. Too late, mate, <laughs> you know, the bin and come back, what am I supposed to do, <laughs> you know? Um, but such is music, you see. You play music and the world is still going around with its nonsense, with its politics and, you know, whatever is going on. I don't know. I don't even watch the news. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't. So I joined a Pakistani group. <laughs> 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 That's the answer. I joined a group in Lahore, Pakistan. Wow. I went out. It was like for I met this guy. He, he said, he says, I'm a rock star. <laughs> I didn't believe him. <laughs> I said, yeah, right, mate. <laughs> your own lunchbox and all that but and all of a sudden we were playing I was uh, and first gig as university and lums in Lahore and it was packed out five thousand people in there and uh, and every show was like that and uh, I, I said you are aren't you <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you when I realized actually I drove past out on the boulevard and there was a massive billboard the size of this room Hi, and he was on it with Galax Samsung Galaxy A. <laughs> 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 That's why the A. Gal we're doing the Galaxy A promotion. I had no idea. I thought it was for me. I thought it was honouring me. <laughs> <laughs> As it is. But, uh, <laughs> so I joined this group in Lahore, and then all of a sudden, the weirdest thing, I got an invite from South by Southwest. They want us, a whole entourage of Pakistani groups to come. There they are telling me I can't come in. <laughs> the next minute, they're like laying down the red carpet. Everything sorted, visas, you name it, food, <laughs> all the women you can eat, uh, all the food, <laughs> all the food you can eat, <laughs> whatever, it's all there, you know. Um, but that's great fun, it's seeing uh, music from a different perspective, and what I learned was that you're so lucky here to play music, the, the, what you have, the facilities, never take them for granted, never take, I never take this for granted, I mean, I get most of this stuff for free. Um, a king of blaggers, you know, long sight boy. <laughs> the guy's giving me one, I'm going to take another ten. <laughs> you know, whatever, you know, it's just the nature of the game, you know. When you couldn't afford it, you couldn't have anything, you know. Um, and then when you can, they give it you free. It's the weirdest thing ever. But uh, I forgot what my tr uh, train of thought was that. But uh, yeah, so I end up South by Southwest playing this big entourage and playing and finding out what South by Southwest actually is. A huge festival, international conference, um, multimedia, interactive. I mean, I'm at South by Southwest again in March, but not as a musician. <laughs> I'm going as a speaker. I'm going for the conference. I've been, I applied for panel picker and I got picked <laughs> for some. There you go. So I'm going out there to play, and then, um, then you have to go through the routines of, oh, how do I get out there? Where's the funding? And then somebody at UK Trade and Investment says, uh, you don't qualify for the, <laughs> for the grant. What do you mean you don't qualify? I mean, it sounds like they've invited me to come and, yeah, but you're not a musician, are you? Am I not? Oh, yeah, of course, I'm speaking. So there you go. So I'm hunting for money. You know, all donations will be gladly accepted. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so this is, yeah, this is, living it high with this rock group um, um, I mean it's, it's, it's a blast it's just quite conventional in some ways but we've got big Indian doll players play these big drums and they dung -a -dung -a -dung -a -dung -a -dung. two of these guys and they spin around and they got a lot you know, greased hair oiled olive oiled hair big mustard two Demis Roussos characters <laughs> spinning around because they're Sufi musicians um, in a <laughs> dervish kind of manner, they just spin and spin and the drum rises up. It's a great show, you know, um, and you're supposed to conventional. I'm using in-ear monitors at the time. Uh, I work with Shore a lot now because they just got some great stuff that I, well, I mean, I always wanted. It was really expensive gear. But <laughs> they've got these in-ear monitors. They're called the 848s. I don't know if anybody's seen them. But um, I haven't got moulds made and I tend to use the Christmas trees. But these have got four drivers in them. So I get the bass response, you know, it always, they always suck when they, for the bass response on stage in ears. You can't really hear the way you want to hear. You hear the top end and the mids and you don't really hear, you know, the lows. So 848s, they're a good, good um, set of phones. But if you've got an iPhone 7 
hard luck. <laughs> but um, I remember my Gibson Flying V and gold sparkle with gold LEDs. Which you would see. I can see on here, but no, it's not projecting well on there. Um, that is actually South Bank. Us, we were invited to come and play um, Alchemy. Um, and that's the same show again. <laughs> There's the Demis Roussos character on the doll there, just there. You can see the back of him and his gold tunic. <laughs> and, uh, what, what I want to tell you about this, this is in the foyer at the South, at South Bank Centre. Now, the South Bank Centre has looked at this band and gone, nobody knows them, who are they? Like I did. <laughs> and they stuck us in the foyer. Free event. So we turn up to play. There's a thousand and a half people <laughs> in the foyer <laughs> come to see the show. So somebody do the maths. One and a half thousand tickets at 20 quid. You know what I mean? That's what they lost. Somebody got the sack, didn't they? <laughs> Someone got the sack. What do you mean you didn't charge for it? Why didn't you put them in? We could have had we didn't quids in. So, you know, anyway. So, you know, there he is. Do you see what I mean? He's a, he's a dude. <laughs> so, and when we were playing in, uh, that's actually in uh, South by Southwest on the streets, on the main 6th Avenue, I think, that's where the main thing goes on. But we just walked around advertising that show, just stopped somewhere and said, go, do your thing. <laughs> you do say, everybody is stop, as you can see, they just stop and filming and dancing, especially the, the ladies just love to dance, and then there'll be some geezer who's got two left feet who wants to join in. And then... Um, then we went to Miami and did the same thing on the beach. They have these moon parties, drum parties, that's what they are. You know, kids on congas and bongos and whatnot. And, 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 and the, you know, the babes are just looking mighty fine in the bikinis and dancing on that to the moonlight. And we come along and, and they go, dun -da -dun -da -da -dun -da -dun, and we come along and just uh, turn off. <laughs> 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 Everyone's like, ooh. <laughs> And we just, we just smashed it. Absolutely smashed it. But look at him. He means business, doesn't he? Hey. <laughs> that was a present from um, the um, Syrian embassy. I played Syria after Libya. Real Axis of Evil tour, they called it. <laughs> but, uh, but it was fantastic. The best tour ever. And uh, one of the government officials, his son was an artist on the, the university, and he wrote my name in Arabic with guitar kind of orientation I think that's just the same again um, he does this thing for me just as a gift uh, that's my logo my branding Aziz <laughs> so that's a Manchester artist who did that and then um, Aziz and Dal I'm trying to look for seven different branding Branding's really important you know for your music because you're trying to you guide people to your products and your brand and they want to associate with the brand and they want to see that they're looking for it and you don't want to confuse them. I'm the person who confuses everybody because I get the indie kids coming, the Roses fans, the Ian Brown fans, and then at the same time I'm getting the, the Pakistani, the Indian uh, fans coming and they want to be enlightened. <laughs> and then you've got the you know, um, guys into dance music. So it's really hard for me, but when you know your brand, you should have the right graphics, you should have the right... Um, branding for your social media for everything this is my <laughs> used to be my living room now this is a story <laughs> so i've got the real anthrax acdc living room this is a huge hallway and there's a dining table in the middle <laughs> so that i could sit with myself you know the wall the angus young wall behind me while i was past the salt <laughs> that's what it was like for me in 2000 uh, between 6 and 2011 I, I got married basically and um I, in all honesty it wasn't that I, well, I was making so much money from records. I was making money, some, um, and spending it just as fast. But um, I married a really wealthy woman. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> so all of a sudden I was living in a, in a lap of luxury. Uh, she was buying me Porsches every year and Range Rovers. Not that I asked for them, but uh, she had issues. So she'd buy these <laughs> cars. <laughs> I don't know what it was. It was like, oh, I bought this for you. and this wasn't happening and she had to buy another new one and it went on it didn't last anyway so <laughs> but uh, she was a real schizo character when she even though she had all this money she went for it after it ended sorry i'll give you all this sordid detail <laughs> but it's just a kind of but it doesn't matter to me i'm i'm cool about it because it's not like uh, i'm not paul mercer i ain't gonna kind of 
head in the bin, <laughs> gambling 50 grand at a time, whatever it is, that's not me, you know. Um, it was fine, but she took me to the cleaners, absolutely took me to the cleaners, um, took everything. Um, but it was good, it was actually a great thing, the best thing that could ever happen to me, because musically, I, I suddenly the hunger was there to play, to write. Now, the reason I'm telling you this story is purely because when we talk about m creating music, all right, we've, I've got this stuff. This is stuff that I've either inherited or the companies have given to me or I earned, you know, or I've had forever. Um, but I am now actually in the world where I've got no money. When I say no money, I mean that I've got to think twice about, can I do Ableton? No, I can't. That laptop's going to cost me a grand. The laptop's a grand and a half if I'm going Apple. You know, Ableton's 400, 500 quid. Crack version, yeah, but my laptop's too old to run a 32-bit kernel. I've got to run a 64-bit kernel. And, you know, so that's my world. But I knew that world. That's how it started. And it's the best world ever, you know. The limitations are fantastic because that means I use Ableton Lite. That's what I use. <laughs> Right, so y y as I say, y'all spoil. <laughs> 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 Ableton Light, that's what I use. I use eight tracks of Ableton Light uh, because it has its limitations, doesn't it? The number of uh, clips, uh, the number of tracks, and so forth. But that means I maximize my use of Ableton Light, what I can do with it. I'm working with Mike Joyce, and we're like, so how do we get it to trigger? Like, well, we can't because you need Beat Seeker from, you know, Max for Life, and then the, but that only comes with standard, at least. Uh, oh, I want a loop, so, but no, you've got to get, um, I mean, I could get Ableton, what's the, the not sweet, uh, sweet standard, and then the lowest one is? Yeah. Intro. It, looper comes with intro. That's what, I don't know. I could we could blag it, you know, artist, you know who I am and all that. <laughs> or you blag it and you get, a, you get um, they say, oh, we'll do your artist deal, whatever. Um, great. But, you know, I'm faced with those real t world dilemmas of how do I get Beat Seeker? How do I get Looper? How do I get a machine to actually run Ableton? So surely this must be something that faces everyone when your income is not coming from music or you haven't got a, a job as such or whatever. So therefore, the obvious choice for making music, creating music, is either you know, the organic instruments, old school instruments, or it's your palm device or tablet. Because who doesn't have a you know, poor as you go or <laughs> you know, contracts? Um, at least a half decent Android phone or you know, um, an iPhone or something. They can run absolutely fantastic apps and things. I'll come back to that. Let me zoom through some more pictures. Sorry.